Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. Um, it's been a while, guys, I know that, <laughs> since I've done a, a regular video like this. Um, I'm a teacher and I've been finishing up the school year with my students. We've been, um, you know, they've been doing finals and finishing up classes and things are just starting to slack off now. I mean, it's still still in the middle of grading and all that stuff, but uh, I just wanted to take a, a, a minute to do another video you know, assure you guys I'm not gone, and to um, go through three really cool adventures, three adventures that I, that I think are, are really great. These are for um, Shadow Dark. These are going to be three adventures for Shadow Dark, and uh, one of them is for kind of first through third level. The second one is for first level, and then the last one is for third level. So it's all low-level adventures. Now, the first that I wanted to cover is the Cairn of Chaos, uh, which is by Lost Heretic Press. Now, Lost Heretic Press did the, the Tomb of... Ostrobaris, or the Lost Tomb of Ostrobaris, which is a level zero adventure, a gauntlet, a funnel, that I really, really liked. I, I um, reviewed it before. It was really cool. Really, really cool. So the Cairn of Chaos, um, as soon as I saw this one, I was like, oh, I'm going to get this one too. Um, and it's really awesome. <laughs> it's really cool too. Uh, it, it's reminiscent of a couple adventures that I've, I've seen before, but it has a couple unique twists, and I really like the way it's presented. And as a low level adventure, it's a fantastic like introduction to a certain style of campaign or a certain kind of game. I really like it. The second one I'm going to be covering is The Unearned Halls, which is a first level dungeon delve uh, by Chthonic Studios. And the third one's also by Chthonic Studios. It's The Cursed Library of Rothel, which is a level three adventure. Uh, this one says it's by Alex Ward. So you get a, spe a specific who is behind Chthonic Studios, I suppose. Um, they're all three really, really cool. I'm going to start with The Cairn of Chaos. And go through them. Now they're all pretty short. The Cairn of Chaos is eight pages. The Unearned Halls is also eight pages. Uh, the Cursed Library is sixteen, so it's a little longer. Uh, won't take too long to go through all three of these. Um, I'll put links below to where you can get them, obviously. So let's start off, as I said, with this one. Now you can see it's a, it's a cool little Dyson Logos map. Um, you get some uh, brief descriptions on the map of where things are. I like that. Um, and what you're going to get basically is a dungeon that is an old knight's tomb that is uh, infested with goblins and they're mutating because the knight was buried here uh, and it's a it's sort of a, like a cap over a chaos vein or like a place of chaos and so things are starting to change and warp and mutate and what's interesting about this it seems to me is that you can kind of deal with the reason for coming without going all the way and fighting a really hard fight at the end we'll, we'll go through what i mean here in a minute here um Get a brief description, a background, and the synopsis of the adventure. Sir Carry and the Just, Knight of the Realm, built his thing, and beneath the hills lay a font of elemental chaos. And then the Red Fang goblins found it and plundered it, and it sort of uh, wrecked them all, and now this mutated goblin has decided that he's going to uh, hold the blacksmith's daughter, Kestra, for ransom until his demands are met. So... Um, on the one hand, if you guys are familiar with the Delian Tomb, which is Matt Colville's level one adventure for 5e that he kind of worked together, th this strikes me as very similar to that, right? You have a knight's tomb out in the thing. The goblins have kidnapped the local blacksmith's daughter and are hiding out there, and you have to go and rescue her. There, it, it's very similar to that in its, in its like, you know, form. But it has a shadow dark uh, twist to it, <laughs> which I think is, is, is cool too. So you get your danger level, you get your traps, you get your chaos goblins and what's going on. Um, not every goblin is mutated, but you have a chaos mutation table, D6, and some of these mutations are pretty tough, especially for a level 1 adventure, and that's why I actually don't... Um, yes, you could run this as a level 1 adventure, but I think you're going to get some wrecked parties if you run this as a level 1 adventure. Um, or at least you're going to get some wrecked characters. But that's Shadow Dark, right? Maybe that's just Shadow Dark. Uh, but if you run this as a level 2 or a level 3 adventure, then I think the players are most likely to succeed. Like, if you do run it as a level 3 adventure, I think they're going to get through it fine. Level 2, you know, you might have some risk. A level 1 adventure, I think you're looking at a very hard adventure. Players are going to have to be very, very smart if they want to get through this without just dying straight up. There are a couple issues with, like, consistency. So, Kestra is described as a human girl here. I think later on she's described as a dwarf. Little things like that. Um, or that's the one thing that I noticed that you know, was just a, an inconsistency. You could you'd do either, right? <laughs> Dwarven blacksmith, human blacksmith, um, either way um, work, would work perfectly well. There's another thing here, Sir Carrion. I really like it. He, he can basically make you swear an oath. And if you do, then you can get through some things without, without um, 
Well, you can get through some things easier. But if you do, then there's a note here that says he knows that this may trap the crawler's souls as he is. And he will inform us of this before they swear. Well, I just think no, no adventurer is going to do that. Except maybe if it's a one-shot and you have like a knight character, it's like, yes, I will do that. Right? But if you're playing an ongoing campaign, this is the first level, and you just now to keep in mind, if you swear this oath, you're never going to be able to leave here. And usually the players will say, well, nope, not interested in that. So keep that in mind. It's, it's a cool offer, and it's one of those things where the players might realize that, okay, this is really hard. We need to do it in order to win. Um, I also think that a lot of players are just going to say no. But that's fine. That's up to them if they want to say no. Okay, so you get the, the, the actual dungeon itself, and this is one of the best features of this book, is that you have the map highlighted, or you have the map on the, the, the on each page, or on each spread, and um, and I should say that, right, that this is a, it's eight pages, but it's two page spreads, obviously, so that's, that's so it's actually 16 pages. <laughs> um, the, the map, though, has the sections on the two page spread that are uh, highlighted, you know where you're looking, so you can see very clearly what part of the dungeon you're looking at. That's awesome. So cool, such a good idea. Um, you know, applause for that. Such a cool, such a cool thing. Very easy to navigate while you're reading through. You just have that up always wherever you're looking. Um, yeah, so you, you have what you might expect. You go through, you have some goblins um, that are kind of stopping the entrance. Uh, you've got some treasure here and there. Um, there's an extra vault you can try to get through. It's tough to get into. Uh, it's an extreme, or not quite an extreme, lockpick. Uh, it's an extreme brake check. Uh, but inside you've got spikes and <laughs> lots of treasure and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm less excited about random magic items that have been so for you to roll up. I get that it's kind of cool you could put your own there or you can roll up something and if you don't like it you can replace it. But I'd rather just have a a cool magic item that was developed by the creator of the adventure, right? I'd rather have that than sort of random magic item A or something. And I get that it, it, it harkens back to more old school game, right? Where you have like roll on the treasure table N or roll on treasure table J. I totally get that. So, you know, it's a nitpick. It's, it's, it's a, a preference. It's a preference that I have that I know other people don't have. So now, as I said, one thing here is that you get to uh, the central hub room three and, and, and the goblins are, are in room four. That's where Kestra is. Um, that's where many of the goblins are sleeping. This is probably where the players are going to, to fight. And so you could rescue her and get out, seems to me, without going into rooms five, six, and seven. At least it seems to me. So uh, yet there, there is the chaos symbol. Um, or the talisman. Uh, this opens the door to room five because right now um, it says that room five has the double locked doors leading west. No, the room into five is unlocked. So you can go into room five, but you're going to find out very quickly that the room beyond it is locked and um, it you know, doesn't seem like there's any way of getting through. There's a statue here that says, Know, my name, know me by my name and my fealty you shall gain. If you answer it correctly, then it animates and attacks you. You've got a, a, a statue here. You don't want to fight, right? Um, but if you do answer correctly, then you get its greatsword, which is a plus one greatsword. That grants a luck token every day to lawful wielders, which is a really good low level magic item. Very strong magic item. Uh, there's this cool cool magic item in the secret tunnel, and I like this one because you kind of have to build it. You get the, you get the axe head, but then you have to put in a haft, and it becomes a plus one axe or a plus two versus goblins, which is really good really strong. And then finally you get the chaos pool. And this is, I guess, if you really want to go all the way and um, just somehow you know, defeat the whole thing. It doesn't seem like you'd have to do this because all you have to do is return Kestra back to town and then you've succeeded in your quest. And so this does seem to be additional, which is cool, right? That there's an additional element to the dungeon that you don't have to explore. Um, and and yet, it seems to me that you're probably going to. Now, I don't know exactly what you get for destroying the chaos pool. Um, in fact, there's no treasure in there that I can see. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, okay, never mind. I, I, yeah. There's the key to room two, to the vault. So if the players have already broken it down, um, or if they've already picked the lock, then there is no, there's nothing to be gained from this, from this 
door, because if you go back to two, uh, there's an iron door which can be locked at a pick of 16 or break that is DC of, broken at a DC of 18. Break. <laughs> um, and you get piles of gold and silver fine wood chests. So that's, that's, that's room two. Room seven has a key. So if you want to go in there and get the key to room two, that's great. If you've already found your way into room two or broken it, then this really is nothing. So the players, keep that in mind, this is a tough fight. If the players have already gotten into room two, then maybe put something else in here because otherwise, again, you know, you have to change the adventure, but if the players will definitely be like, okay, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna kill it. They're gonna go in there, they kill it, and, and they get nothing. So, because in Shadow Dark, as written, you don't get much anything for killing creatures. No experience points, you get it for treasure. So, if, you, if you're playing with the hunter rules or something like that, then yeah, then this, this would totally work. But getting kind of nothing for searching the room and then fighting this big fight, if they stick it out, I would put something in the pool, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. It's up to you. Uh, you get a concluding the adventurous section, and then you get a bestiary, which is really cool. Uh, the Guardian statue, uh, Razik, and uh, the Chaos Skeletons. Now, one interesting, I mean, one thing is Razik, for example, he's got 30 hit points. And he gets, he gets two attacks with a great club plus 6, 2d6 damage. Um, and he's got mutations. And he can summon goblins. D6 goblins, uh, d4 rounds after com combat begins. So that's not necessarily a, uh, you know, just more, more goblins are going to come. Um, this guy could be really tough. Especially for a level, I guess I said, if you're doing a level 1 adventure, this guy's probably going to kill you. I'm mean, probably going to kill the party, especially with D6 extra goblins. Uh, especially with um, his, his random mutations. Because uh, those mutations could be extra attacks. It could be uh, explosive. Um, uh, no, the, the, granted, explosive just kills him. Or he detonates. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it could also be the Odor of Decay, the Berserker Rage, um, which actually would be quite good, suffers double da double damage that turn, but gets advantage on attacks. I'd probably take that trade as the players, but no, that's not the one they can control. Anyway, it's a tough fight. That's my point. This is a very tough adventure, especially for level one pre uh, players, I think, that, or level one characters. This could definitely end in a TPK. So if you're going to run it, you know, be sure to be, be aware of that. But if you roll it, run it for slightly higher level adventurers, level 2 or level 3, then I think this is going to be much easier. It'll still be, I mean, I think Razik will still be a tough fight, but I think it would be pretty relatively easy uh, compared to level 1, certainly. And then there's the Chaos Pool itself, which is also tough. A very tough tough thing, because if you get stuck in there, it's uh, invulnerable, only damaged by magic. And, you know, maybe this is just my players. I think a lot of players, when a fight starts, they're not inclined to run away. They're not inclined to run away. So if you if you have the Chaos Pool start to attack and they realize they can fight back, even if they don't have much that can fight back, maybe they have the sword, the magic sword, maybe they have some spells and things like that, um, they're probably not going to... Um, they're probably not going to just leave it alone. But the interesting thing is that if they do, it has an effect which just mutates things that, uh, that, that are, you know, pulled into it at zero con, it mutates them into monsters or skeletons, GM's discretion. That's a great in ongoing quest. So maybe, yeah, they rescue the girl. Maybe they kill the goblins. Maybe they don't kill the goblins, they just rescue the girl. Maybe whatever it is, they get out. This is still an ongoing threat. Maybe it's not the next adventure, but maybe down the road, a necromancer finds it or like, you know, a, a wizard finds it and starts to mutate things and get his own arm. Who knows what? This is a cool ongoing adventure that you could have here. And then finally, you get the credits at the very end. 14 pages, all said and done. So, the Cairn of Chaos. A great little low-level adventure that you can run into and uh, and throw to your players. I think it's a great... And there's great ideas in here, too. Um, fun, introductory adventure to Shadow Dark if you want to introduce a very, very deadly game. If you're, if you're not going to introduce players, level 1 players, to the level 1 characters to this, then it'd be a little bit more manageable, I think, as a higher level, level 2, level 3 adventure. All right, the next is The Unearned Halls by Chthonic Studios. This is a really interesting one. It's just a very small complex. I mean, nine rooms. It's not a very small. It's just a, it's not a, it's not a mega dungeon, <laughs> right? The Unearned Halls are rumored to hold a priceless book that can summon great riches on demand. Though, it's said, someone or some, something has taken up residence in the ancient halls of this crumbling place of learning. So I like the first page. You get a quick uh, description of the place um, and the light, ceiling, random encounters, and Erland where he is and how he moves, because that's one of the things that he moves around. Um, this, this wizard. 
So you get the random encounters for the place, the plans and plots, a series of letters, and, and basically just the descriptions of the rooms. Um, you're coming in down the hall, and uh, then you're coming around to the different rooms. One, two, three. Now, one of the things here is that it's very open. It's very open, right? You can basically encounter any of the rooms except nine um, in the order that you explore. Um, I guess seven as well, right? Seven and nine are the only two rooms that you can't just immediately go to if you pick the if the players pick the right uh, paths. And I like that. I like those sorts of things where you can kind of go as you see fit. Um, there isn't, again, as written, there isn't anything that would distinguish a door from any other door, at least as far as I can see. So probably the players are going to go to the end of the first hall and see the open room at the end. And then... Um, yeah, and and then just pick doors as they see. I like there to be a little bit more, um, you know, like what's what's a reason to go to that room? What's a what's an indication of what's in this room beyond and that sort of thing? Um, but I don't see any of that here. But that's fine. You could add that yourself. I would recommend it um, because it does help. Uh, it does help get a little bit of uh, yeah. It does help you get a little bit more. You know what's going on in each room uh, but essentially what happened here by the way and, and you get this at the very end which i wish was early on um is you have this town you have the selwyns who are part of that uh town they're a wealthy family um and then you get Ur Ur Urwood selwyn and then you have erland uh, erland is the second son of the house he's abducting villagers murdering them taking their trophies he's a this, this murderer and serial killer um and then um Erwood has uh, decided that he wants to deal with Erlen, his son who fled and found this, this this dungeon and he's summoning allies from this book. This, this book lets you basically summon demons. And that's actually, it's not riches that it summons, it's demons. And so you've been hired by the dad to go kill the son who is about to go and destroy the town, basically. Um, <laughs> Erlen's plan itself is not particularly creative, so I, I like that. I would probably put these at the beginning rather than at the end but uh, it, but it works just fine it, it, you do have to like okay what am i doing here why am i reading why am i going through this what's going on here what why are these things here and then you get to the last pages and you go oh i get it yeah again i'd flip it to the beginning but you have the, the treasure you can get here and one of them of course is the codex inferni harmoniae which is uh you can just summon a demon <laughs> which is pretty powerful an imp um uh, or it just drains your life but it's it's not just uh, you know on a one through four yeah it serves loyally on a five it causes havoc and on a six it just takes just drains your your health. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. But that's basically it. I mean, that's basically the whole dungeon. You have this guy who's wandering around. Um, he's not not really happy about you being there. <laughs> Obviously, you've been said there probably to kill him. And you've got imps and you've got a cubi and you've got um, a, a hellhound um, and you've got just you know Erland as a as a villain as well uh, running around um, so that's what you've got this is the this is the uh, this is the dungeon pretty short pretty straightforward I like it um, I'm not uh, I'm not like, you know, it, it's not like the most crazy, you know, <laughs> um, surprising, exciting dungeon that you're ever going to see. But the stuff that's happening in the rooms is pretty cool. Um, you've got a, a little bit of interaction with some of the things in here, Minaria. Um, you've got some uh, treasure. You've got some tricks, things to figure out. Um, but this is a very straightforward, in a lot of one sense, it's a very straightforward adventure. You're going to run into... Um, well, demons and devils and as a level one adventure i think this could be pretty hard you're running into a hellhound you're running into a, a cubi you're running into lots of imps um the hellhound is probably the hardest thing here i imagine um, but otherwise i think you're all set one thing i would i would like is if erland was given a clear set of stat blocks somewhere or these things were given clear stat blocks so having a beast here at the end would be nice um it's not the end of the world. You can always add that in. Um, it, you know, wouldn't be it wouldn't be too 
wouldn't be too hard. Um, you could just say, okay, he's a mage or he's an apprentice mage or something like that. Still, it would be nice to have the stats in the book. But anyways, you have the Unearned Halls of Icathonic Studios. Uh, first level dungeon delve for Shadow Dark. I think it's cool. Straightforward, but really cool. Uh, but I think this last one is, is, in my opinion, much stronger. And that's the Cursed Library of Growth Fell, which is level 3 adventure for Shadow Dark. Uh, this is a two-level dungeon, so it's got the two floors. And it's got several entrances into it, and it's got a really cool um, theme, which is cubes. Gelatinous cubes. I love gelatinous cubes. Um, there's lots of different kinds in this dungeon. There's also a another adventuring party that went in here before you, and they are mostly dead. A couple of them are dead, but there's a couple that aren't, and they are people to interact with, and they're sort of, they have their own thing going on, their own motivations going on. Really cool. I like that sort of thing. Uh, you have this, it's, it's a library where wizards used to go to study, and it was um, carved in the side of a massive mountain near the snow-covered peaks far away from civilization. Uh, just really interesting. Things went too far. It went badly. Everybody got wrecked. It's a little bit like, it reminds me a little bit of Hot Springs Island in that you have these elves who have been turned, we're well not elves, but in Hot Springs Island you had the elves who have been turned into these like jelly weird things. And that's sort of what is here, that the people were turned into these oozes that are barely sentient as a result of their crimes. The gods have punished them. Um, and, and their shape fits what they were doing. So the different kinds of oozes make sense in the sort of rooms that they are based on the sorts of people that they were before. I like that. I think that's really, really cool. You get some cool random tables. Now, one thing here that I, I would probably change if you're going to run this um, is the, the curse table. Because the random encounters are just happening, right? You don't get to choose them. Um, and so as, as it says, most are harmless, some are potentially lethal. They're not potentially lethal, they are lethal. Uh, save or die. On a random encounter check, a save or die, and, and worse than that because you turn into an ooze, uh, for example, um, I, I would be very cautious about doing that. I don't think I would do that to my players. <laughs> um, so I keep that in mind. You might want to remove number 10. Maybe what happens is uh, an, an arcane ooze is summoned on the curse or they're drawn to you or something. But um, many of these effects are silly. They're kind of fun. And with certain groups, I think they'd be really, really funny. Other groups are going to get annoyed by some of them, I think. Some of them are rough. Like, for example, and if you roll an 8, the creature's right eye turns into an emerald. Removing it to sell, for example, causes D6 damage. Yeah, it makes sense, but you just have an emerald eye. Um, that would be really cool. Some players will love that. Some players won't. You know, know your audience. I think having a, a 1 in 5 chance on a random encounter to roll a 1 in 10 chance to kill D4 PCs on a failed DC 12 con check, that's pretty rough, Right? Because that's what you have. If you roll a random encounter and you roll a five, well, then you roll on a curse table and roll D4. You target D4 NPCs. And then if you roll a 10, those D4 NPCs have to roll a DC 12 con check or be transformed into a random arcane ooze. So keep that in mind. Anyway, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't do it, but keep that in mind. If you have a table that really is opposed to just randomly dying, which I think most players would be, because think about it. You could roll the first random encounter. could be a five and a 10. And then that player, that character is just dead, or those characters are just dead. Um, that seems, you know, any anything that kills players without agency at all, without them choosing anything, is usually not a terribly good effect, right? It's like rocks fall, you die, sort of thing. Um, if it were like, if you go into this room that's very obviously cursed, then maybe that you deserve that, right? If you go into the room where everything is turning into oozes, you deserve that. But if you're walking down the hall, you roll a random encounter, boop, you're an ooze. Sorry, you're dead. That'd be pretty rough. But anyway, here we go. Essentially, you have these different rooms that are all... Um, they're all different, sort of not... Uh, they're not all different, uh, but many of them are different kinds of studies, right? So you have, like, seismic studies, you have necromantic studies, you have, like, you know, all these different things that you can go through and find uh, rooms that are dedicated to that sort of thing. And then there are oozes that makes... that kind of work with that. Right, so the geomantic arcane oozes, or the necro, necro, necromantic arcane oozes, and they all have sort of effects there. There's some pretty powerful things you can find in here as well. Some scrolls, which for a wizard in Shadow Dark is insanely good. So keep remember, in Shadow Dark, scrolls are not the same as in 5e, right? In 5e, I mean, yeah, in 5e, scrolls are good. Wizards can still learn them. Um, 
it adds them to their list of spells known, and they're, if they add them to their spellbook. Uh, in Shadow Dark, you just if you if you cast the scroll or you try to learn it, you can learn it permanently, and it's just a new spell that you can use, right? And you can use it until it, you don't you don't have any slots. So scrolls in Shadow Dark seem much stronger to me than scrolls in Five E. Um, and there are some troll uh, some scrolls in here. Excuse me, some scrolls in here that I, that I think are really really good. Um, lots of opportunities to run into more um, uh, curses. And then you got some aquatic oozes here, so that's obnoxious. Now, one thing I really like about this book is that you have the hazards and the traps and the treasures laid out if they're there, um, or rather notified. You have a hazard and what the hazard is. You have the treasure, the trap, if it's and, and what it is, and then treasure if there's treasure in that room. And then you can read below for more details about the hazard, the traps, or the treasure. So that's really cool. That at a glance, you can see what's in that room as well as creatures, right? So okay, cool. Um, right away, before you even get the the, uh, the italicized description of the room. Which I'm usually not a fan of, but that's fine. Um, you get, you get the rundown of the room. Awesome, really, really well laid out. I wish there were more maps in this one. Um, there aren't that many, but that's okay. You can go back to the beginning. Um, you get the scroll of storage, which is a great thing. There's a scroll of hold portal. It's an interesting spell. Null arcane oozes. Those are always interesting. Um, you can find the, the Abraham Winder or Windry. Is it Winder? Probably who's dying, but you can save him. And if you do save him, then he uh, has his own motivations and it's not necessarily gonna be just he's gonna help you. He might help you, he might not. Um, unsure about what exactly happened. <laughs> I like that. The illuminated manuscripts, there's a really interesting thing here with eating a book. <laughs> I think that's really funny. Uh, it smells like mint and chocolate, which I would probably eat. Uh, you have invisible stalkers and you have a rotating study which is a really cool idea the room rotates if you turn things and so then uh, you can access alcoves that are hidden otherwise super cool but then you lock yourself in the room to, to face what you're what you've unleashed by the things that are in those alcoves so really cool i like that a lot and some of the stuff in there one of the things in there is really valuable 200 gold piece stunning ruby um, and you get the black sealed letter which is another thing for the dungeon sort of a, a lore thing for the dungeon too um, you've got the nature studies, right? The cleaning pit with an actual gelatinous cube in there. Lovingly named Little Cleanie by the resident researchers. It was almost treated as a pet and is thus trained to wait for a body or other organic material to be placed. It tends to rub, lovingly rub up against any living creature that comes into the room, but also accidentally in subjecting it to a paralytic toxin. <laughs> I love that. It's funny. You get the crypt and there's a mummy down there. Mummies are, are pretty tough. Um, and then you get the monsters of the place. This is pretty much a straightforward, like get treasure, get magic items, get scrolls, fight monsters dungeon, which is really great. There's no huge saving the world threat here as far as I can tell. Um, there's no, uh, you know, nothing like that. This is just, hey, look, here's a dungeon. You can loot it for stuff. It's refreshing to see that from time to time. <laughs> um, you get the monsters and, and uh, you get the arcane ooze, geomantic ooze, pyromantic ooze, necromantic ooze, the aquatic ooze. And then you can get the Hallowed Nail, which is, or sorry, you can't get it, that's the adventuring party. Um, I'm thinking of, for a minute, I was thinking of um, uh, Hollow Knight, right, with all the nails. And then you get the adventurers and what they're like. And it's interesting that you get um, the history and the group and what they were like since two of them are just dead. Um, it's kind of interesting to see that. Anyway, you get the credits at the end, the beta warning, and let's keep, keep this in mind, this is an open beta Right or a pre-released adventure has not been placed as it's subject to change at any time. Um, it's funny. I think this is this is. It seems to me very uh, very solid. I'm not sure that it needs to be a a beta. Now, obviously, the playtesting in terms of the the number of monsters and things like that for level three adventure that might be off. But uh, but as like a, an overall uh, you know finished product, I didn't notice anything that was too bad or anything that was bad at all. Really, with like you know writing or or you know, mistakes or anything like that. Um, I think it's great. The fact that it's still in pre-release though means what I would recommend would be more maps. That's it, more maps really. And maybe maybe a little more treasure. There's some cool you know, scrolls and things like that, but maybe a little more treasure would be kind of cool. For level three adventure, you want a little bit more treasure, I think, than what's in here. But you could always add that easily enough as a, as a GM. So, these are three great adventures. I think the third one and the first one are my favorites, but I think the third one is my favorite. I love oozes. I think it's a great uh, themed adventure. So The Cursed Library of Grothel by Chthonic Studios, The Unearned Halls by Chthonic Studios, and The Cairn of Chaos by Lost Heretic Press. I'll put the links below to where you can get all of these. 
All right, guys. Well, I hope to do more of these in the coming days, hopefully get back into the swing of it. I hope this has been interesting to everybody, um, and, and uh, I will see you all in another video.